Little kids don't grow up dreaming of being offensive linemen. Offensive line happens to you. I remember talking to my dad one day, telling him I wanted to be like Jerome Bettis, I could be a big running back. He was like, son, I hate to break it to you, but I'm 6'3", your uncle's 6'7", your grandfather's 6'4", your great-grandfather's 6'7", your mom is pretty tall too, so it looks like you're gonna be a lineman, so you might as well get used to it. I had to lose weight, you know, as you know, a second, third grader, and you know, that's kind of when they just put me on the offensive line. Then I started playing, you know, in like a junior league, and they put a red X over my helmet because I was still too heavy. And at that time, I was like, I can't really lose any more weight. I'm just, I'm a big guy. A journey that often starts with a red X on a helmet eventually turns into the heart of all great football teams. More specifically, five hearts, as big as tomahawk stakes, beating as one. Offensive line is a position unlike any in sport. Five men working as one unit, a bond and a brotherhood. If you're looking, it's pretty easy to spot an offensive lineman in the wild. Probably a baggy t-shirt. But it has to be tight in the sleeves, because linemen love tight sleeve shirts. They're probably in some sort of like truck. I'm a truck guy myself. I feel like it's more convenient for my, for my size. Probably in some comfy shoes too help our knees, lower back. We dress comfortably, you know, because, you, you know, sometimes you kind of have to. And that's most of the offense line. I mean, we're comfortable, we sweat a lot, you know, we're eating, we get food stains, like, that's us, like, we do that, but, like, we don't really care. You never let an offensive lineman tell you that they think they have drip. That's for skinny people. It doesn't look good on fat people. Tyler Booker is the exception to the rule in more ways than one. New Haven, Connecticut isn't known for churning out five-star recruits and Division I studs. New Haven means a lot to me because it really made me who I am. Some of the things that I've been through, the people that I've encountered, the people who have poured so much and invested into me, it means a lot and I never want to forget them. So whenever I get a chance to uplift and put New Haven on a bigger pedestal, I always do that. New Haven means a lot to all of us, and the community definitely comes together when we need them to. So now when he comes back home and he does the free camp for the kids here, those same people are still coming back to support them, be it if they have their own kids in the camp or if they're just there as a spectator to support. It's always great to be back in New Haven, see a lot of the up and coming athletes. What I aim to do is really globalize the, the, the talent in New Haven. It makes sense, but when it comes to drip, the starting guard for Alabama is at high tide. From head to toe, Tyler Booker oozes drip. Lyman definitely have style and charisma, but not what everybody else sees style and charisma as. So some Lyman style and charisma might be in a button down, some boot cut jeans and nice pair of snakeskin boots like some of the guys on my team. Some others like me, we like putting on some of the designer clothes, I have on nice watches, nice chains. But I feel like offensive of linemen do a great job of being themselves unapologetically at all times. For the head, Tyler only trusts Transformers. Google will tell you it's a barber shop. Stop by sometime. You'll see it's a little more than that. Hey, Tyler, what you want? What up, y'all? Hey. What's going on? What up? What up, brother? Yeah, how you all doing? Right, chilling. Good to see you. Transformers is a, it's a great environment. People go there to get their hair cut, obviously, but people also go for some great conversations, debates. And my dad is pretty much leading a lot of those conversations and debates when it comes to sports. Whenever, whenever something's going on, I call E. It's my guy. He even came out and cut my hair for media day, so that's family right here, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm his favorite stop. I'm his first stop and his last stop every time so as soon as he soon as he lands in connecticut he calls me hey cuz you know i need the special haircut what time you got when could i come by you know for him i always make room first and last first and last yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, he always gonna come at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's a community, it's a family atmosphere as you can see behind we sit here we congregate we talk we build with each other and that's it we just all come together as one <laughs> 
Appreciate you, cousin. Anytime, man. As for the toes, Book's look starts with the feet. Guy like me, I'm a big shoe guy, so I used to build my outfits from the bottom up, and that's why I went wrong on media day. So I got the suit first, and then I looked for the shoes last. It worked out great, the shoes worked perfectly, but I went away from the program. I gotta stick to it. If he if he get if he get this in duffel, I'm like, that's gonna be my game that's, day bad. I'm like, that's too accurate. Monogram tie, that'll, that'll kill it. And a simple black and white suit. Now you teaching me the game. Give me, <laughs> up. Give me ideas. I gotta, you know, I'm a business casual inspired by Tyler Booker. You know what I'm saying? Don't let the Gucci loafers fool you. Tyler Booker is still a lineman, and every lineman has a lineman story. For Book, it didn't get any darker than a Black Friday in Pop Warner youth football. That was the first time I ever felt real heartbreak. <laughs> that junior peewee season, I think I was nine years old, and that's when I really figured out that like, football is what I want to do with my life. That was when I really came into my own, and a whole year my family and I had did a great job of keeping me under the weight limit all the way up until the regional finals game. So I'm in the car. I get a phone call, and one of my cousins is a coach on the team, so he called me, he was like, Tyler can't play. I dropped the phone, and I had this look on my face, and my brother and my mom in the car, what's wrong with you? What's wrong, what happened, what happened, what happened? I'm thinking something happened to Tyler. Now he's like, he can't play. I'm like, what do you mean he can't play? Why can't he play? He's overweight. He's overweight? What do you mean he's overweight? I got there, I seen him, seen his Eyes were welted up from crying, but he was still on the sideline rooting his team off. It was on Black Friday, so it was a setup. So Thanksgiving, then I got to weigh in the next day. Then I had went too many pieces of chicken, and I was over the weight limit, but that was really tough for me because I really led my team to that point. But it just taught me a lot about being consistent and not getting too comfortable. And I think that was the year I knew, like his first game that year, I knew like this kid's going to be able to play football far beyond what he's doing right now. Tyler would use this setback as motivation. Working closely with trainer Frank Quito at Breakout Athletes to make sure his skills would never again be left on the sidelines. This is the book. Great, great. How your arm doing? It's getting there. Frank always pushed me beyond what I thought I can go. Like Frank was always there telling me and reminding me of my goal. Like, he was like hey, you want to go to Alabama? You want to go here? You want to go here? You want to be this? You want to be that? Okay, it's time to prove it. Tyler started when he was around eight or nine years old. He would contact me to say, hey coach, do you have any time this Saturday? And I would say, Tyler, the only time I have is 7 a.m. He would come in at 7 a.m. Most athletes want to sleep in on Saturday. So you knew early on I had all the drive that was going to be necessary to be successful. I'm a big self-talker. So whenever I'm about to hit a big set in the weight room, but like you talk, talk all this talk about being an All-American, being the first round draft pick, I can do it. And that's what really drives me and gets me going again. While linemen like Tyler always put in work at the gym, on the gridiron, it's the quarterbacks, wide receivers, and running backs who get the star treatment, so much so that they're referred to as the skill positions. Offensive linemen may not sell the most tickets or jerseys. With offensive linemen, it's always about others, never self. The big boys want you to know, whether it's someone picking up your daughter or someone looking for a date, you could do a lot worse than having an offensive lineman show up at your door. If I had a daughter, I would definitely want her to date an offensive lineman because I, I believe we're the smartest people on the field. They're natural protectors. Well, there's more of us. We're bigger guys. You know, we snuggle better. You with an offensive lineman, you ain't got to worry about, you know, nobody's going to mess with y'all. I feel like once you get to the skill positions, that's when they're a little more head case. They, they, like, oh, I got this body, I got all this ego, I can get any girl I want. And the big boy needs some love too, you know. O linemen that are out there, there's hope. A slim possibility that you can get a girl. Just Tune in to the next episode of O Line, presented by Duke Cannon, to see why pancakes are every offensive lineman's favorite food.
as well as a visit with Notre Dame guard Rocco Spindler to see if you can still call it a foot-long coney dog if you eat three of them. Cause I know I still believe I'm a champion. That's a must. That is a must. Oh, yep, 3X. You can be, let's go. Okay, so you gotta make us a lineman. Yeah, we'll put a lineman up there. Just like this. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> that smells incredible. They all smell good, but like different at the same time. Oh, it smells good. All candid scene.